I'm spilling my second cup of coffee all over myself already this morning. Hemi, come here. Hemi, come. Because all of my travel mugs are in the barn because I walk to the barn with them and then I leave them there. Eh. And I just spilled it on my pants. Um, anyways, but the boys and I, where's one boy? There's one fluffy boy. The other one's in the woods somewhere. We're making our morning walk to the barn and I have filmed this video so many times and I don't like it every single time for multiple reasons. So I have once again deleted all the clips and we're gonna refilm, but this morning, got my coffee, I'm gonna go feed the horses and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk. Now you're probably wondering what exactly are we gonna talk about? That sounds pretty serious. Fair enough. What do you have now? What is that? What is that? And let's not play with it. Get on, go. I don't know what that is. Anyways, I don't know who the heck is coming up my driveway. Come on, get in the stall. Both of these dogs chase cars. Come on, Nemo, get in the stall. All right, this is why I have so many issues filming videos because I can't have two seconds of peace around here. The chickens are gonna squawk the whole video too. I don't know who just drove up the driveway, but it's fine. <sighs> Love the fact that we're missing a bell boot. Like what else is new? First off, I want to thank you guys because you have been so incredibly patient while I go through this whole fiasco with Diesel literally over the past year. So this has been going on since March, really before March, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but as far as the explanation for what the heck has been going on with my horse, um, requires a little bit of background information first. You can't escape. You cannot. Also, because I know someone's going to ask this um, run-in structure thing. It's a very large stall. It's diesel-sized. It's still being built. And he's a nasty, nasty cribber. So in order to protect his teeth, we put hot tape up so he can't chew until the walls are finished and flat. So he can't grab onto the surfaces. And it's literally just to protect his teeth. He's fine. It does not traumatize him, I promise. There's a couple things that I want to address before um, getting into this. Isn't he adorable, first of all? I love him, he's a stinking cutie. So first, I think we need some background on Diesel. Um, if you don't know our history, Diesel is now, oh my gosh, how old are you? He's eight now. We're in 2021, he's eight now. Um, I bought him as a late four-year-old, it was like December of his four-year-old year. year. Um, my trainer and I were coming home from the Congress with Elliot, my sorrel horse, who unfortunately had to be retired because of a lot of things, and that's a different story, which I've told some of, but if you guys like story times, then I can always get into that. Um, but Elliot just needed to retire from the show world, and so on the way home from Congress, of course, I was an emotional mess because it was such a traumatic, traumatic time for me. Y'all see my dogs right now? Um, obviously I was not going to sell Elliot, so my financial resources were very limited, um, but I did not want to quit horses altogether. So she was like, look, I've got this horse in the barn and he was in for training at the time, training, resale, something like that. Um, and she's like, I've got this horse. You may completely hate him or you may be best friends, get along like magic. I think it's worth a shot. And later on, I find out that she set us up because, in her words, we're both, we both have very severe ADHD and we have the same personality and mentality. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but long story short, I absolutely fell in love with him, obviously. Um, kept him in training with her for another month as I got to know him because it was a completely different ride than Elliot. No clue what I was doing whatsoever. Um, so I needed to get to know him, so I kept him up there and went and learned how to ride him. So that's kind of the background there. I've had him, so he was a four-year-old, he's now eight, so coming up on four years. Which seems like a long time, especially when you're about to hear this story, but Hi, you're so cute, Kissy Heart, I love you. Um, the other things that I want to make sure are said before we get into this story are a couple of things. First off, why I've been so quiet. Um, and I think for the most part, you guys will understand once you hear what's been going on. 
which is why I want to share this also because I think it's a really good learning opportunity and I know there are other people going through similar things medical mysteries with their horses and it's really really frustrating especially when you love the horses as much as I do and you are the one caring for them 24 7 um, so I want to make sure it's an open conversation with you guys but I stopped sharing things on Instagram because everything has been such an incredible unknown and just really overwhelming and frustrating and you'll understand that in a minute but every time I would try to share something like that on Instagram I got really mixed messages and responses that I didn't want of people who didn't know my horse and were going off of a caption on Instagram had never met my horse in person knew none of his medical history um, trying to make suggestions and you know share other personal experiences and I on it like it's tricky because I do want there to be an open conversation and I want this to be a learning experience for everybody and I want myself to be a resource for others. However, I have trust issues when it comes to medical sources for my horses. I've been through nightmares um, and it's really, really frustrating when A, you don't know what's going on with your horse, but then you have people that you don't know and don't know your horse making random suggestions and it's just a bunch of rabbit holes and it's really overwhelming and people telling you that you're doing it wrong doing what wrong like well, we're doing everything like it's just very very frustrating so I just kind of cut that off altogether until we got some conclusive answers and got on the path that we needed to be on that being said there are a lot of medical professionals and um, equine professionals and everything else involved in this story and the other reason I've been so quiet because is because this has been a very emotional journey um, and the journey's not over, don't get me wrong, but this has been incredibly emotional and I did not want to accidentally shed any sort of interpretation of a bad light on anybody involved. Um, although it's very, very frustrating on my end, I don't want to put the blame on anybody else and I don't want to include names in a bad light because I know even though I personally don't get along or agree with a vet, that may be someone else's saving grace vet. And I know a lot of vets that I have had many bad experiences with and do not get along with personally that are some of my best friends, like diehard vet practices will never go anywhere else. And that's perfectly fine. I don't want my bad experiences to ruin someone else's interpretation or use of a vet. I also know we have a very serious mental health issue in the veterinarian industry. And I don't want to add to that. <laughs> so that being said, I will not be sharing any names. Um, and I don't want to, I, I don't think badly of anybody involved. Um, it happened. There's no point in being frustrated over it. I just want to take what we have and move forward and be able to grow off of this. So some more background information. So like I said, I've had Diesel for almost four years now. When I first got him, I kept him in my trainer's barn. And prior to my trainer and I getting him, he had like something went a little wonky with his feet. It happens. And I think it's important to say as people are horse shopping or, you know, getting into the show horse world and everything else, no horse is perfect. And you really just have to be realistic with what you are able to care for, what you want to care for financially, physically, what you are willing to do. And that includes, you know, vet checks. Vet checks are not, in my opinion, vet checks are not a purpose of making sure a horse is 110% absolutely perfect, no flaws whatsoever. If I were to be vet checked, I would be a disaster. Nobody would want to get into this. Um, so, and that's just the reality of it. So you really just have to look at the horse that you're interested in and figure out if it's something that you can or want to deal with. So... We checked out Diesel, everything was fine. He vetted clean. He just had some different looking feet. And that was like, he's sound, he hasn't had issues with his feet. It was something that we could handle. And at the time he was using a farrier that was in my trainer's barn. The trainer, my that barn that I purchased him out of was like an hour, an hour and a half away from my home. So like I said, I kept him with my trainer for a month after um, I purchased him to get to know him. And the farrier was doing really well with him. So I was like, all right, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And I didn't have a reliable farrier at my house that was capable of shoeing 
a show horse. Like, I don't even remember who I was using at the time, but like everyone else at my house was barefoot. Diesel had two shoes on the front with pads and two shoes on the back. And I was like, I don't want to mess up anything that's working for this horse. So let's just keep it the same. So it worked out that after I brought him home, after that month, um, it worked out that I'd haul up to my trainer's barn to get a lesson and get him shod every four weeks or so, whatever this cycle was, I don't remember. And so it worked out really well. Well, when I brought him home, I don't remember how long that lasted before. And this was like the middle of winter. I brought him home in February. Um, so turnout was a little bit weird, but when he got home, turnout at my house was much larger and a different schedule than at his previous barn. So of course, being a yearling brained coming five-year-old, he lost his marbles a little bit in turnout and just went balls to the walls. He's, he's not the brightest bulb. I love him to death, but he's not the brightest bulb. So there were a couple of instances where he was pulling shoes frequently and it got to the point where scheduling was not working with the farrier at the other barn and he was pulling shoes so often that I really needed someone reliable at my home barn. And it was getting to the point where like he went on probably like eight weeks before he could, before I could get a hold of the other farrier and that's when I was kind of like, all right, like we need to change this cycle a little bit. So I started the journey of trying to find a farrier that would come to my house. And that's where things went significantly south. Um, I will 100% take the blame for this. <laughs> Diesel, no, <laughs> you're gonna trample me. Here, you want this bucket? Is that what you wanna investigate? That's fine. Um, so I will 100% take the blame for this. My main complaint to myself, like if I were to go back, um, obviously I should have done more research into the farriers that I was having come out, but we kind of live in the middle of nowhere. It's hard to get farriers. Good farriers are very hard to find nowadays anyways. You going out to get a drink? You're so cute. <laughs> um, we had a couple farriers come out and my other complaint to myself, like if I'm gonna blame anybody, blame anybody it's gonna be me. Um, we had a couple farriers out, one in particular, not going to say the name, um, that I should have stopped when I saw things going south. And I didn't because I am a people pleaser. My social anxiety is through the roof. I didn't say anything and I should have. And I cried when he left because I compare it to a situation where, um, like say you go to the hairdresser and they give you a bad haircut. You cannot fit through that door. I know you're looking for the puppies. Where'd they go? Where'd your puppies go? Um, you go to a hairdresser, they make one side uneven, so they cut the other side shorter, and then this side gets shorter, and they guess, and before you know it, you have a bowl cut. That's kind of what happened to his feet. So it was pretty obvious that the farrier was not equipped to handle what was going on. And instead of saying that or walking away or saying like, hey, I think this isn't gonna be my job, he just continued chopping foot off until Diesel was left with a little itty bitty nub. Yes, you had a little itty bitty nub. And dude like couldn't walk. Yeah, this is a story about you. You're so handsome. Um, and it was awful. It was horrible. And I honestly wish I took more pictures. I'm pretty sure I deleted them all because I was so heartbroken that I let this happen to my horse. Um, but from there, I found um, my current farrier, which obviously like at that point it was just damage control. Like feet, especially Diesel's feet grow back so slowly that it's really just a waiting game and damage control of maintaining them until you can grow back a healthy foot. So from there, the damage had been done and we, my current farrier, God bless him. He is a miracle worker. He was able to get Diesel sound again and going in the right direction. And, you know, things were looking up, things were fine. I'm obsessed with him. He's literally my best friend. Like, look at him. What a freaking cutie patootie. Yeah, we're gonna go pick up your, your lost bell boot, my guy. Your lost bell boot. This guy. Did you take that off? Yeah. All right. We have changed locations like four times now. You're making a mess, I love it. Who cares if the lighting's horrible? This is my cute horse eating hay, enjoy it. Thank you, you're adorable. Um, so fast forward to March of this year. So March, 2021, 
um, we had things going in such a great direction that Diesel actually went barefoot all winter. Um, and that was just to hopefully toughen up his feet a little bit and help him kind of like almost balance himself a little bit, give him a break from shoes, you know, the whole nine yards. Okay, we're back in the stall because this is Diesel's world and I'm just living in it. So Diesel was barefoot, things were grooving, whatever. Um, so March of this year, um, he had just gotten front shoes back, put back on to start legging them up for show season and which <laughs> that aged well um but he had just gotten shoes put back on he was on turnout and i was leading him to turnout it was the end of march i don't remember exactly what day um but it was the end of march i was leading him out to turnout and we got like almost to his turnout pasture and he tripped and literally i saw my peripheral vision his entire hind end just go down this is a big horse to just go down um and like he made a noise that sounded like it was painful so of course I started immediately bawling and I turn around and I watched him walk he had his leg hiked up and wouldn't put pressure on it and like eventually started like kind of trying to use it a little bit um but was very obviously like three-legged lame so we were like right outside his pasture gate I took him to the pasture and I took his halter off and I just wanted him to like move freely in front of me so I could see how he was moving to better evaluate the situation and he continued to hobble around it was not improving at all so i went ahead and put the halter back on i did take a video to send to my vet um to just give him as much information as possible and i'll put that video here Ooh, good boy so i sent that to my vet and it was already a weekend and like he couldn't get out so he and I told him I was like well my neighbors god bless them have a vet coming out to their horses to do like spring shots or something on it was like Monday or Tuesday and so he's like go ahead and call that vet and have them come up and just x-ray the leg to make sure nothing's broken fractured you know incredibly wrong um and just have them don't you don't need to have them diagnosed because I told him I was like I don't really have a great experience with this vet this I don't he's not my regular vet I don't use him um he's like you don't have to have him diagnosed just have him take the images and send them to me and my vet we're gonna call him vet a <laughs> um so vet a um was so gracious and he called we'll call him vet b he gave a phone call to vet b and he was like look this is my client this is how I need you to take care of her um this is the horse this is a little bit of background on him it was fantastic because i was a nervous wreck and i didn't want to have that conversation with somebody else so he called him the vet showed up monday or tuesday whatever that be did an x-ray keep in mind he was not supposed to diagnose he turned to me and told me he tore his deep digital flexor flexor tendon and he was going to need all this stuff and you know how to take care of it blah 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 and i was like uh okay um, so he did send the stuff to my vet, Vet A, and keep in mind, Vet A, normally I just used him for, like, routine stuff for Diesel, like, so his maintenance and everything else to keep him going, because Diesel had been seeing him for a really long time, so okay, and he's, like, one of the best vets in our state, and I was like, okay, if it's broke, don't broke, don't fix, don't, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And he had been working really, really well with Diesel and I didn't want to lose that relationship. And I don't really, again, I don't trust everybody and I don't want to mess something up. So I had been religiously using this vet and paranoid to use anybody else. And so my vet called and he was like, I really don't think it's deep, deep digital. So he eventually came out and he did an ultrasound and he found some sort of damage to the suspensory. Now, when I say some sort of damage, a little bit of history there. Diesel has always had a little bit of a different left lead. No soundness issues, nothing like of a major concern, but like his left lead was just a little bit different than his right lead. And like I noticed it riding and like sometimes you can notice it in the pen, but like when you know this horse as well as I do, like you notice it. Um, and we thought maybe it was his feet, like he had a little bit of high low going on. We thought maybe it was that. So, managed it the best we could, whatever. Anyways, so when he came and did this ultrasound, he was like, I can't find a clear 
tear in the suspensory, but there's something there that shouldn't be there and it could be an old injury that maybe is causing the left lead issue. Um, but it looks like maybe he flared up that old injury and that's what's going on right now. So we went ahead and injected Hawks and Stifles because specifically Stifles, I think. I think we did both. I honestly can't remember. Um, because that can help strengthen the suspensory and all that stuff. And he was due for it anyways. Keep in mind, he is an 18 hand sport horse. You got to keep those things well oiled. <laughs> um, and that's a whole different conversation on, on equine athlete management. Um, but anyways, so we did that and he was like, give him some time off, start legging him up back up very, very slowly and see what the injections do, um, to help that specific injury. And we'll go from there. And I was like, cool, groovy, sounds good. So a couple weeks go by, he starts like tack walking, whatever. The swelling gets ridiculous. His leg is huge. Um, and it really happened overnight. Like he was fine. And then his leg swelled up like a tree trunk. Um, and he was getting increasingly more lame. And I was like, this is not what's supposed to be happening. So I put him back on stall rest. Um, or I don't, he might've always been on stall rest this whole time. I don't remember. I've like blocked out this whole thing. Um, but so I put him back on strict stall rest, back to wrapping the whole everything. And I started calling my vet. This is where things also went significantly downhill, and I still have the utmost respect for this vet. No hard feelings whatsoever, which is one of the main things. I am, like, sitting in poop. Um, I just realized that. It's fine. Um, one of the main things I, I did not want to do in this, this information let out was put a bad light on this vet specifically because he is fantastic. I love the way he thinks um, and how he has helped my horse. But with being one of the best vets in the, in the state comes with time constraints and he just was not able to get out to me and help me um, as often as we needed in this specific situation, especially. So unfortunately, I could not get him back out for a significant amount of time. And there was a lot of communication error there. And um, it got to the point where he was going on like four to six weeks in the stall. And at this point he had ripped both of his front shoes off. He's notorious for ripping shoes off in the stall. No one knows how he does it, but he pulls some fast ones on us. And it's ridiculous. And he causes so much damage every single time, which is part of the reason we built this big gigantic stall for him with a run. <sighs> Anyways, I told you this was gonna be a long story. So at this point he had no shoes on um, and he was in a stall. He was getting downright dangerous. And I went, and I was continuing to try to get a hold of my vet. And at this point, keep in mind, my trainer had like a newborn baby. Like, I, there's a plane. I call her for everything. Like she's my second mom. And over those pa over those like, just the winter months, I feel like I call her crying like 99.9% .9 of the time. And she just had a newborn baby. And I was like, I'm not bothering her with this. So I finally was like, I need my second mom and I called her and I told her what was going on and she started like she's not a panicky person but she was like okay like I think we need to maybe address this now because this sounds like an emergency situation so she's the one that encouraged me to at least go get a minor sedative for diesel because he was causing damage to himself wall kicking pawing going absolutely bonkers on stall rest and I was like this is not productive um, so I called our local vet, not vet B. So we're going to call them vet C. Um, I could be doing numbers too. Um, but anyways, so I called vet C, which I just hadn't used them in the past. And this is something I also think needs to be said. Um, I believe there are different vet specialties. So like, I don't, well, I don't have hard feelings for anyone involved. Um, like I'm the type of person where like I will use one one vet for lameness. I'll use another one for like routine shots or something like that. But like if a vet specialty is lameness, it's for a reason. And like I want that vet to be looking at my horse. And especially younger vets if they don't have a specialty yet or they don't have a ton of experience in the field, whatever. Um, vet A actually explained this to me really really well. So. It's not necessarily a problem. How do I do this? How do I phrase this? Okay. 
So what you see a lot in the vet industry is younger vets. There's nothing wrong with how they handle situations. However, they don't have a ton of experience yet. So what they'll do is they'll treat things how they are presented to, how it is presented to them via what they read in a textbook. So when you bring them a case that's not necessarily textbook, they'll go about it as they medically should, but they don't have the experiences to pick up on every little thing and put you know, these strange experiences together. And that's not a problem, but you just, in, ca in cases like Diesel's, we wanted a lameness specialty vet that has the experience and has seen these weird cases. So that being said, I went to Vet C and they had a new receptionist on the phone that told me that I could come pick up a sedative. And when I got there, they're only like 15 minutes away. When I got there, they were like, oh, we haven't seen this horse before, so we can't actually give you the sedative. And I was like, I understand that, but like, what can I do here? So they told me to end up just go home and get Diesel, which I did. So I went home and I got Diesel, um, loaded him up in the trailer. And at this point, this day was going so horribly that I ended up calling my boyfriend crying. Did I? I think I was texting him and he called me and I was also crying. Um, and he ended up taking the day off work and he came home to just be there for me, which he's amazing. God bless him. I really needed him that day. And so he came home, he went to the vet with me, um, came home and got Diesel with me and he drove the truck and I rode in the back with Diesel because Diesel is not a good dude in the trailer in the first place and he was already like really upset and his feet were hurting um I forgot to say the the major point of like the emergency turn on this was I brought Diesel out of his stall and like he couldn't walk on the front okay like he was crippled wouldn't come out of his stall when he did he was doing like the classic laminitis walk and I was like oh my god and I finally got a hold of that A and he was like, uh, looks like he's trying to founder, but I still can't get out there. So that's what pushed me to go to vet C and at least get a sedative to calm him down to not cause further damage. And like, he wasn't letting me ice his feet. Like it was really bad and dangerous. So back to where we were, Robbie and I went home, got diesel. I rode in the trailer with him up there. It was terrifying. Dude was thrashing around. Um, and like, he's a big horse to be thrashing around and upset and like, like I said, he's not the brightest bulb in the box, so he doesn't really think through situations like that. He just panics. I love him to death, don't get me wrong. But, and all I do is make fun of him. But um, we got him up there. They did x-rays. They did um, another thing that's, I can't remember the name of it, but basically they injected some sort of like dye into his feet where they could see the blood flow to his foot. And, and this was in his front feet. And he had blood flow, but they were concerned that he was foundering so and at that point I was trying to explain to them explain to them like hey this whole thing started with the back leg and they were not concerned about it at all which was really really frustrating and I was like I understand we need to take care of the front feet first but like can we at least acknowledge that there's a hind end issue too so we don't just overlook it and that was not a concern at all which was really really frustrating um but anyways so they ended up putting him in ultimates and I'll put a picture of the ultimates here. The ultimates basically, what they did was they, and Diesel, like I said earlier, he's got a high and a low foot and he's was always kind of upright a little bit. And in those situations, you have to be careful about bringing their heel down. You can't just drop them down, right? So it was a long, prolonged process. So what they did, they had their podiatrist there who chopped his heel off, like literally like took a couple inches off um, and put him in these ultimate boots, which were supposed to like gradually bring him down. I don't even know. They screwed and glued the boot onto his foot. And they looked at me and they're like, if this comes off, it is a 911 emergency, like call us immediately. And I was like, no problem he's gonna take him off like I know this horse and I tried telling them that multiple times whatever so they sent us home um stall rest obviously and hand walking whatever this went on for like a month or two he took him off two or three times the first time he took him off he um I called them they came out immediately they put him back on 
Second time they came out the next day, put it back on. Third time they're like, okay, just put him back in the soft rides. And because he took one off and he, they're like, put the soft ride on the boot. It'll be close enough. And you know, we'll be out there in a week or so. And I was like, okay, a little frustrating, but all right. Um, so they eventually came back out and we had like three or four appointments with them. And um, the whole time I tried to say like, hey, if he's gonna be on this amount of stall rest, can we at least try to like diagnose the hind end? Because we still have swelling, we still have lameness. Um, and if he's gonna be on stall rest for the front end anyways, I'd really like to tackle two birds with one stone. And if there's any sort of like shock wave, whatever we can do for his hind end, let's go ahead and do it. Um, but no one would listen to me and finally, the, and it wasn't even like they wouldn't even acknowledge it and be like, all right, yeah, we're going to address it later. Like they just were not listening to me. So that was a frustrating part, especially as a horse owner and the one caring for the horse 24 um, seven. Like this is, this is my dude. And like, I got to stand up for him. Um, anyways, so they came out the last time and the whole time the vet and the podiatrist were trying and trying and trying to convince me and tell me that Diesel needed a surgery in his fronts to cut his deep digital flexor tendons and drop his heels and let the tendons regrow longer with the dropped heels. And I was like, they didn't really give me a lot of information on it, just kind of told me that they want to go in and cut tendons and that's just going to be it. And I was like, um, no, um, I'm really weird about surgery. Like, I, I don't want it to happen to myself and I don't want to put him through it unless he absolutely needs it. And I was like, at this point, I don't care if he's pasture sound. I just want the horse to be okay. Um, so I told them no. And then I went home and did my own research on it. And then I told them absolutely not. Um, come to find out, I'll get to that later. <laughs> um, but so that last appointment was with the vet, the podiatri podiatrist, and my farrier. And they basically wanted to like tell my farrier how to do his job. And yes, there's a time and place for that, but this was not it. So they pulled the boots off and they were like, okay, put these shoes on him. And my farrier was like, you can't just put these shoes on him. Like he's got a weird shaped foot. Now he has absolutely no foot because you chopped it off and there's nothing to nail to. And we have to create shoes for him because his, sho his foot's such a weird shape. So we put him back in the soft rides to just wait out until my farrier could get some special shoes for him and also grow a foot because there was literally nothing to nail to after he came out of these ultimate boots. And this whole time, right after that, both the vet and the podiatrist left the practice. So they were like, all right, peace, good luck. And I was like, okay, now I have no vet, um, cool. And the podiatrist continued to text me about the surgery even afterwards. And I was like, look, I'm using somebody else. Like, I don't, I don't want the surgery, sorry. So after that point, um, I was working solely with my farrier and just once again, damage control. And again, I don't want to shed a bad light on anybody, but I, this, that was one of my biggest regrets was taking him there because looking back on it, like I said earlier, they were not where I would go for lameness. Um, don't get me wrong, I still use Vet Practice C for routine shots and everything else, um, but they are just not lameness specialty vets. So that was a regret that I had in that whole shebang. And let me just say, if you think you know who I'm talking about, please don't ask like, oh, was it this Vet Practice? I'm not gonna share it and I will like delete comments because I, I don't want any bad light on these vets. I, that is my biggest concern with posting this video. I don't want to spread bad information. So I will not be sharing that. Um, anyways, so my farrier and I were back on damage control, doing the best we could. Um, he was, every shoe we put on him, he was taking it off. Um, he took off the casting. He just had no foot and he was getting a little better barefoot. Um, like I kept him in the soft rides 24 seven, but like I'd walk him around barefoot just to get him out of the soft rides for a little bit because that does add a lot of angle and just start gradually like transitioning him, right? So at this point we still haven't, the back end's still just 
whatever. Oh, and what, the last appointment that we had vet practice see out where they both, they just kind of said, all right, bye, peace. I brought up the back end again and it was swollen at that appointment. And previously I had been trailering him to the vet practice to get a checkup. So by the time we got there, it was not swollen anymore because of the movement in the trailer and everything else. And so this time they came to my barn and it was swollen. So the vet looked at it and she was like, oh, it's cellulitis. And I was like, I mean, maybe now, because the swelling hasn't gone down, but like, that's not the main root of the issue here. So she treated it like cellulitis. She wrapped it. We did everything we did. I was supposed to do, I was prescribed for cellulitis. Shocker, it did nothing. The swelling was still there. Um, but that's just another frustrating point, whatever. Um, so, I'm starting to lose my train of thought. I want my coffee, where'd my coffee go? So we were there, my vet, my fairy and I were working together, whatever. And finally, I was like, I need at least a vet on board. Um, and I started doing research, asking my friends who they were using privately instead of, I didn't wanna make a big giant post about it. I was using, I was talking to my friends who had like similar situations, whatever. And we found vet D. So this is vet number four at this point. We're gonna call him vet number four because vet D just sounds weird. Because I call him D. Um, so vet number four in this whole fiasco, I call and I talk to his wife or his girlfriend. I'm not honestly really sure. Um, but she manages all the scheduling thing and I'm on the phone with her and I was like, this is what's going on. I really just need some help with this horse. And she was, she was talking to me. She's like, you said your horse's name is Diesel, right? And I was like, yes, ma'am. And she said, is he really, really big? And I was like, yes, ma'am. And she goes, does he crib? And I was like, uh, yes, he cribs violently. <laughs> um, and she's like, oh my gosh, I think this is the diesel I had as a three-year-old. And I was like, I totally forgot about this. My trainer had told me about this at one point. So she never owned him, but she had him in her barn as a three-year-old. And she tried to get him to jump a little bit. And like, he just mentally was not, <laughs> not doing it. Um, but she just, she told me how much she always loved him as she had like some old videos of him and everything else like that. And it just, it made me want to cry. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, like I can hear it in this woman's voice that she actually genuinely cares about this horse. And she was so happy to hear that he landed in a good home. And I was like, okay, so I'm gonna bring you this horse and he looks like a feral wild donkey and it's gonna be embarrassing, but it's fine. I still didn't give him like a haircut or anything. Um, so I bring him there and um, the vet was absolutely amazing. Now this is my most recent vet experience um, that I posted about on Instagram a little bit ago. So I bring him there and I pull him off the trailer and this, he ha is like a mobile practice, but we met at a, um, like a local arena. And I walk him into the arena and the first thing the vet says is hind end. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. Are you kidding me right now? And I told him what happened and he sat there and he actually listened to our whole story. Everything. And um, like, obviously I'm a talker. So like I shared all the emotional aspects of this story, like every single part. And he actually listened to me and had like watched all the videos I showed him and everything else. And he's like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it's dispensary based on the video you showed me and, um, just how he's moving now. And he was, he was lame. Like after that, it was like a two hour trailer ride to get to this vet. And, um, he was lame and he was like, it looks like stifle but we need to get the front end figured out, figured out so he can move correctly so we can accurately diagnose the hind end. I was like, that's fine. As long as you see it and I'm not crazy and we like acknowledge it, that's fine. Um, so I was like, that's, that's perfectly fine. Winston's rolling. What a cutie. Um, so then we pulled the soft rides off of his feet and he was like, oh, and I was like, mm -hmm, yeah. Um, so he's like, he took a bunch of x-rays and he was fantastic. Like he actually showed me on the little like x-ray iPad thing, like all the measurements and drew out everything and like showed me in depth what was going on. The fact that we had no soul depth whatsoever. And I was like, yeah, I know. Like <laughs> his soul was like touching the ground. Um, 
And I can't remember the exact numbers of that, so I'm not going to repeat that and say the wrong thing. Um, but they were really bad. So, um, and he told me that... <laughs> Winston. He told me that um, everything that vet practice three, number C, whatever I was calling it, I don't know, um, did was not quite what should have been done um and i was absolutely right to not let them do the surgery and he would not have been a riding horse let alone a show horse past that point that would have completely demolished his career and i was like all right thank you for telling me that because no one else did um so i was thankful for that at least so our point was nine o'clock in the morning and he was like look i don't want you to leave today without some sort of progress and i told him i was like we're going to florida this, our appointment was on Tuesday. I left for Florida for five days on Thursday. So I was like, whatever you want to do, but I'm not going to be here. So I'll touch on that in a, in a second. Um, but we ended up, he told me, he was like, I've got my farrier coming at two. And he would, the vet was so gracious. He called around, found me a barn to go put diesel in a stall until two o'clock. And it was like, it was like 10 minutes away and I hauled over there. Diesel, Diesel was fantastic. I was able to meet <laughs> Diesel now. <laughs> I was able to meet the vet's wife and just, she was able to see Diesel again for after like what, almost four years. And it was just, just the ugh, I hate to say the vibe, but like the atmosphere was incredible. I think Diesel knows that I've got the camera up because this is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but the atmosphere was just incredible. And um, he w had a great time at the other farm. And then we went back for the farrier at two. And the whole point of the farrier being there was so they could like x-ray him and the vet and farrier could work together on putting a plan together. So we went ahead and just put regular steel shoes on him to get him up off of his soles. And then while I was gone in Florida, we kept the soft rides on top of those because we were so paranoid about him pulling the shoes off and I wasn't able to monitor him 24 seven like I normally am because I was in Florida. So we kept the soft rides on. <laughs> Hazel, kept the soft rides on. And when I got back, he still had shoes on. He was groovy. Um, and now he just has the shoes and they're still super tight and he has Diesel. <laughs> He has the bell boots on. I really like these professional choice bell boots. They're not, they like the same width all the way around. They're like the wrap around ones, whatever. Um, and he's been sound and the vet told me to go ahead and start, you know, tack walking, trotting a little bit, start legging him up. So next time our follow-up appointment is on the 9th. Today's what? The 19th. So in a couple weeks. Um, and we'll do further work then and get more of a treatment plan together. But the plan right now is just A, get him up off of his soles and B, get him a little bit stronger and let his foot grow healthy instead of being, you know, chopped up and everything else um, to be able to work with it. So he is significantly more sound now and the vet sounded really, really hopeful for our future, which was just incredible, incredible to hear. Like I can't even explain to you guys. Um, and at the end of the day, like, like I said earlier, if this horse is just pasture sound the rest of his life, I don't care. Like, he has done enough for me. Um, he has gone above and beyond for me what anybody ever expected him to do. Um, and he's really just my best friend. And I just want nothing but the best for him. And all the animal crackers, right? All the animal crackers. Um, and I just, I just want to see him happy. And he does love to work. He hates not being active. So... That was one of our big wants for him. No matter what he does, we want him to be active somehow. So, that being said, I think I touched on everything. I'm sure I'll think of other things that I did not include, but I'm sure I'll make follow-up videos and I'll try to, I did try to vlog our um, original trip to this fourth vet and it was just so chaotic and such a new territory for me. I was like, it, it didn't end up happening. <laughs> um, but I'll try to do an update on our follow-up visit on the 9th and keep you guys updated on Instagram. And hopefully this answers a lot of questions on the why I've been quiet and the medical background um, 
of it. <laughs> um, and I want to thank you guys again for being so patient and understanding with me um, through this whole process. It has not been a fun process at all, and it is still going. Sincerely and truly, <laughs> thank you guys for being so supportive. And I will, now that this information is out there, don't knock my phone down, Winston. Now that this information is out there, hopefully I can be a little more open with you guys and um, and seriously help others that might be going through some sort of, sort of medical disaster like this. And I hate it for you if you are, but if you are, I am absolutely here for you. And so is Diesel. Are you itchy? Are you itchy? And hopefully Diesel Muffin will be seeing you guys at shows again soon because we desperately miss going to shows together. Yes, we do, and seeing everybody. This horse loves going places more than nothing else. He screams when the trailer gets loaded up, and he doesn't get to go. <laughs> oh, I just love him so much. Anyways, thank you guys for watching that whole spiel. I know it was a long video, but hopefully I'll be on better terms next time. <laughs>